Welcome to Color Country Politics, where we discuss all the important political issues facing Iron County, Utah. Our guests include elected officials and community leaders in or representing Iron County. This is episode 57, 2020 Candidate Forum, Kale Weston, Congressional District 2. Welcome back to Color Country Politics. I am Jenny Hendricks, along with my co-host, Jesse Harris. Howdy. (laughs) And we're really excited to welcome to the podcast today, Kale Weston, who is the Democratic nominee for uh, Congressional District 2, running against Chris Stewart. Um, I got to tell you, Kale, we don't often get to have Democrats on this program. (laughs) So we're excited to have you. Welcome. Well, I'm honored to be here. And uh, I would say, Jenny and Jesse, if if I had a magic marker, I wouldn't change the boundaries of this district at all. So I will be out and about again at the end of the week. In fact, we'll be in Iron County uh, on the weekend. And um, I'll talk a bit more about why I love CD2. I am a Democrat. I'm a proud Democrat, but I believe there's an important conversation to start with everyone, regardless of politics and what party people may support or have formally supported. That's an interesting uh, thing to bring up because I know that the boundaries of District 2 are are very interesting because it encompasses a lot of the rural areas of the state. And then you've got kind of a, a a slice of Salt Lake City and so there is a it's a it's a big district and there's a lot of sometimes competing interests so I it I, I'm glad that you you know have, have put out there that you would leave the boundaries as they are because I, I think it is a very interesting district when it comes to trying to balance the rural and the the urban issues that that both are important in our state so I'm, I'm glad for that thank you yeah you know my view is our country doesn't come together if- all the blue-minded Democrats stay in a little bubble uh, or, you know, red folks, quote, you know, in their red bubble. I think that why the district is important. Yeah. I love running in it is I think it's an, it's an important example of a candidate who's got deep rural Utah roots in my family, which I can talk about, but also wants to talk about issues with people who may not agree with me or I, I may not agree with them because I think the divides in our country only get solved when we listen to each other. And the, the art of listening is, is hard to do, but it's the right thing to do. And I, also, I 100% agree with that. Kale, okay, let's start by just having you tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, so I, uh, I'm from Utah. Um, I'm happy to be back. I, uh, my parents grew up in Milford. So if you were to kind of plot the Weston Johnson family story, it would really start not far from where you are in Beaver County. So as a kid, I spent a lot of time in the Mineral Mountains in Wawa Valley. And both my parents uh, went to school all the way through high school in Milford. And then my, my grandparents uh, on my mom's side uh, managed and owned the little furniture store that's no longer there on Milford's Main Street. And then in Beaver as well. And the Carter side of the family, which is my mom's mother, uh, she grew up in Minersville. So I always like to say that if you go to the little war memorial in Minersville, there's a lot of Carter names on it. Uh, my dad's side were railroaders. Uh, my grandpa Jack, he's passed away, but he was a Union Pacific railroader for 45 years. But again, the the heart of the district is really got a lot of deep family stories tied to it. Um, I used to deer hunt in the Mineral Mountains and hunt arrowheads and chase lizards as a kid. I ended up growing up in northern Utah. I uh, went to the University of Utah and then did some studies overseas, and then the biggest part of my, my job before uh, teaching and writing was I was uh, representing our country in the State Department for 11 years, and I uh, spent seven of those 11 years in Iraq and Afghanistan. I can only imagine what stories you could share. I've, I've got a real estate client who was in the green zone, and it's just fascinating to, 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 to listen to the the rebuilding and it just just fascinating stuff. So it, it, it's quite interesting for me to talk to people who have actually been there during that time. I, I find it fascinating. Well, I'll put out there that I wrote a 600-page book, so if anyone's interested in <laughs> learning too much about war, but uh, when people ask why am I running for office, I, I do say it's, it's partly tied to 
and ever want our country to start another wrong war, a war that doesn't need to start. But I did run. Well, Kale, you you you've sort of done the segue into our next question for me. The next question is: Tell us why you're running for office. It's a, you know running for office is a, is a hard decision. I, I sometimes say I haven't run for office since high school, but I've also never lost an election in Utah, and I hope to keep that keep that pattern. But that's going to be up to voters, including a lot of your listeners. But I'm running because I believe our country is um, divided in a way that's very dangerous and I think it's a divide that I can help bridge. Um, my work experience before uh, teaching uh, in northern Utah and becoming a writer uh, was to try and bring factions together. Um, in Fallujah, after the biggest battle of the Iraq war, I worked with a lot of Marine leaders to help rebuild a city that was half leveled and that was a big challenge. And then in eastern Afghanistan, I spent a lot of time trying to get the Taliban uh, to drop their AK-47s and stop killing our troops. So relative to my prior work experience, I think I'm well suited to being a bridge builder. And I, I think our country needs more uh, people who believe in that. And I genuinely believe in that. There are all, also other issues, I think, that whether it's it's the urban part of the district in Salt Lake City or in Iron County or Washington County or Beaver County um, that people care about. And it, it doesn't matter which party uh, they identify with, and I think those issues include health care. I think they include um, land, resource management, stewardship. I think it includes jobs. I think it includes uh, schools in rural uh, areas, as well as how do you teach when a virus hits. So on issues, I think there's a lot of common ground, and those are the things I'd, I'd love to speak to. That's great. Thank you. So tell us, what are a few things you hope to accomplish if you are elected? Well, I think number one uh, is health care. I think that uh, what COVID-19 has shown is, is if you lose your job, you lose your, your health insurance. And I think that that uh, is not a sustainable model. And I think a lot of families, whether in urban parts of CD2 or rural parts of CD2, are hurting. I myself had the best insurance you could ever have when I was in the federal government. It's exactly the kind of insurance that Chris Stewart uh, and any member of Congress has, and I never had to think about it. Uh, when I left government to become a writer and a teacher, I got on the Affordable Care Act, the individual market, which I thought would be a one, two, three-year bridge. It's been a 10-year bridge. So every fall, like a lot of your listeners, I get a letter that tells me, you've got 10 days to decide whether you keep this insurance or not. But what COVID, again, I think has shown is we need to do better. We need to do better for a lot of people who are one or two checks away from not being able to afford uh, an unexpected health care bill. I also think jobs um, obviously are important. I think in rural communities, having a lot of deep roots in, in Beaver County, and my grandpa used to ski outside Cedar way back in the day. Um, I think there's a way to do better by giving people opportunities, and that might include uh, working remotely, uh, like many people are doing right now. A third issue, uh, I think, would be kind of the environment. I think that one thing I, I try to do is not put people in a box. So I don't think ranchers all are the same, just like I don't think environmentalists are all the same. I don't think that if you live in a certain zip code, you all have the same issues or priorities. And I think that's the diversity of CD2 uh, that I love. So if we can show that uh, in a district as diverse, half the state, uh, geographically a CD2 that we can listen to each other and have a conversation. Uh, that'll be, I think, some real progress. Finally, and I, I usually don't mention this, but I think it's important. I'm a native Utah, and I remember when Utah used to have a much healthier balance politically. And I think one of the symptoms in our country that I want to address is when one party is in control of everything, uh, usually bad outcomes follow because there's not enough oxygen in the room. So I'm running also, I think, to show that in a district that was intentionally gerrymandered to prevent a Democrat from winning, I trust voters to determine who might fight for them the best, and I want to make that case to every, every voter in the district. That's great. That, you know, one of the things you mentioned as far as remote work I think that's going to be an increasing part of the economy in Southern Utah as people discover through this COVID thing that remote work 
and, and Jesse's brought this up before, that's, that's how he got to move here is because he's able to work remotely. Right. And I think, you know, people are going to realize that they get to have a, a great quality of life and still be able to support their families by, um, by working remotely. So that, it's actually something that's sort of a buzz down here in Southern Utah and we're kind of looking for that. So thanks for bringing yeah, that up. And I think that includes making sure that there's a broadband. I know Jesse has a, an amazing rack in terms of computers, and we need to, to look at what uh, the state and the government can do to help support uh, creativity and innovation. So, like I said, we did uh, a five-county uh, road trip, and we're about to start another nine-county one uh, tomorrow. And when I'm listening to rural uh, folks, uh, one of the things they talk about is quality of life and then how to keep kids in, in towns where they want to stay. And that's a, a big part. And again, I don't speak about it theoretically. I, I'm, one, I'm one removed from Beaver County and I love rural Utah. That's why, again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change the boundaries of this district at all. That's great. No, that's something that is important, I think, to a lot of people in rural areas. So I appreciate that. So, Let's talk about what do you think Congress is doing well, if anything? <laughs> um, I think they did a good thing when COVID first hit. I think you know, there was not a lot that was coming out of Congress at all. Uh, and then they did, in a bipartisan way, get $1,200 to people. I got my check because I don't make a lot of money these days. And I think that was important. It showed that our Congress could function and at least get agreement on some kind of program. Now we're at the second phase of that debate, and it looks like things are, are, are jammed again. Um, but I would give them credit for that. I think rather than treating Congress as a monolith, I would say there are good people in Congress. There are representatives, and not just Democrats, but there are some Republicans too, who I think genuinely believe in public service, and I think they want to help uh, their constituents. So. There's positive amid the, the negative. Um, I, I think, you know, for example, we were talking earlier about the space program. I'm glad to see that, you know, if, if we may soon be back in space. And, and that's, I think, only possible because Congress has appropriated funds to NASA. That's an issue that should bring us together. And I'll tell you one story that I, I write about in my book. Um, when I was in Afghanistan, I met a young medical doctor and when Neil Armstrong passed away, uh, the only email I got uh, from anyone, period, no family member, no friend, was from a young Afghan doctor who wrote very powerfully about what Neil Armstrong and the mission to the moon represented to, to people all around the world. Well, of course, my dad was in Vietnam at the time in 1969 uh, when that moon mission was going on. But I think it's the power of also why I'm running. I believe our country can really inspire people. And I think that's been lost with some of the division and some of the finger pointing. Um, so Congress deserves credit for supporting, supporting NASA. Yeah, well said. I think uh, on the day that we're recording this, it won't be released for a few days, but on the day that we're recording this, there was a, the SpaceX uh, flight that ended up getting scrubbed. But you're right, it's very inspiring. And I'll give, I'll give President Trump and Vice President Pence credit for that. You know, I'm, I'm not such a Democrat that I believe Democrats have all the right answers. I think that if you've got a good answer and you've got good policy um, suggestions, we ought to take them and grab them. So I'm proudly running as a Democrat. I think we're a party that brought the country Social Security. Uh, we're a party that has long fought for the elderly. We're a party that has fought for labor, for a lot of hardworking people who don't yet make a living wage. But I don't believe that one party has all the answers. And I think Utah used to produce politicians who were much more balanced. Um, and right now, we don't have that in the person I'm running against, Mr. Stewart. And we can talk about that if you'd like. Well, let's kind of pivot and talk about what do you think should be improved in Congress and, and whatever you want to wrap into that is is great. It's your time. Sure. So I would say again on healthcare we need to do more uh, for more people. I think that the you know we talk about with liberty and justice for all. We all kind of know it as kids. I think if we believe that public education 
uh, is a public good, I think healthcare should be. One of the themes that we're running on, and maybe I'll give you an overview of that, is this idea of being better neighbors. I believe that you know, if my neighbor down the street doesn't have health insurance, I care about that because we're only a healthy community if we're looking out for each other. And I think Utahns, to our credit, have a pretty good tradition of showing that we care about each other. Um, so that's one of the themes, better neighbors. And we announced that in December. And of course, with COVID, uh, everyone's talking about helping each other. And I'm all, I'm all in favor of that. I just sure hope we keep focused and a discipline to to keep helping each other uh, when maybe COVID isn't as serious as it, as it is right now. Um, the other thing in Congress, I think, that I would focus on are policies that really show uh, certain issues are about keeping our country safe. Um, I'm running because I don't want any young people from Iron County or from Washington County or Salt Lake City, for that matter, anywhere in the district to be deployed in a war that should never have started. And I think sometimes people forget that a member of Congress votes for or against war. And I, I was in Iraq when members of Congress would come into the rooms where Marine generals and I would brief them on issues. And I wrote a chapter in my book called When Senators and Generals Talk. And the whole purpose of that chapter is to show that it does matter uh, who we send to Washington because war and peace is, in my view, probably the most important decision a member of Congress can, can take. And in the run-up to the Iraq War, both Democrats and Republicans failed in that regard. I think too many of them did not take seriously what it would mean to send, and we've got our tech director here in the room named Ty. He's originally from Logan, and he was a Marine infantryman. And we have a lot of veterans helping my campaign, and there's, there's two mafias helping, the Milford Mafia, and the Green Mafia. And the Green Mafia is helping because I think they know I, I take very seriously that role of a member of Congress, which is you only start a war if you absolutely have to. Yeah, that's that's pretty powerful. And I, I love the reference to the, the two mafias, the Milford Mafia. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to use that. Newer because I know there's a divide there. But as I get smart on all the county politics, it's not that different from what I was challenged with in Fallujah where, you know, they say all politics is local. And I've been in rooms where people a month or two before in Iraq or Afghanistan would have killed me. So I think I'll survive this campaign. But politics is pretty serious business in rural Utah. That's why I like it. You know, I've, <laughs> that's no kidding. <laughs> I'm trying to get to know people and listen to people. And I think if you, if you get to know people and you build those relationships, there should be no challenge that we can't overcome, whether it's water issues in Washington County, whether it's, quote, SUA versus the farmers and the ranchers or water challenges uh, beyond just Washington County. Um, there's the tortoise issue I know that I've been smart on and wild horses. And again, if, if our government's gonna get people in it that, that run toward challenges, uh, that's why I wanna be hired. And if I, if I don't deliver, then I should be fired in two years. Um, that's kind of how I look at it. I'm not running to become a full-time citizen of Washington, D.C. We all know the Orrin Hatch story. He broke his promise after two terms. For me, I think the people will, will, will be able to tell pretty quickly if I'm fighting for them every day of the week, and that's my goal. That's great. Thank you for that. I, I, I appreciate that philosophy. Um, so tell us, what else do you want voters to know about you and then you know maybe give us your your website do you have a facebook presence social media how what do you want people to know and then how do people find you sure so just to recap i'm from utah happy to be back spent uh, quite a bit of time in some tough uh, locations around the world most notably uh, fallujah iraq helmand afghanistan post afghanistan so i i guess if there's one mile line that i think prepares me well for voters to take me seriously is after 11 years of representing our great country, I feel like that has prepared me well uh, to represent this district. I'm a bridge builder by nature. I don't walk into a room and point fingers. I don't try and exclude people from important discussions when we're trying to find solutions on policy. But I'm not someone who's parachuting in at the last minute. I, I know this state, I know this district, and I really care about it. 
And I'll say again, I wouldn't change the boundaries at all. And I've had Democrats say to me, well, what, you're in favor of the gerrymandered district? I'm like, well, we inherited it. And I believe, you know, again, we can't stay in our corners and point fingers at each other. The only people who win when we do that are people around the world who want to do real harm to our country. So what your voters, I think, need to know about me is, is that I'm a good listener. Uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan, I used to say to the, the religious leaders and the tribal leaders and some of the government leaders that I always keep the promises I make, which is why I don't make very many promises. Um, so the promise I'll make to all your listeners are, you know, give, give me a chance. Uh, I hope to go to our website, westonforcongress.com. Uh, we've got a great campaign team. Uh, it's growing. We've got dozens and dozens of volunteers. We are looking for people who might want to help or be interested in, in learning more throughout all 14 counties in CD2. We do have a Twitter account. Uh, we've got an Instagram account. And I'll, I'll say that keep your eyes and ears open for some of the video recordings that we're doing in, in counties like Iron. We're recording people who live in rural Utah full time. Um, and the only question we're asking is what issues are important to you? Because I think in order to be a representative, you need to earn that title. I don't think that title should just be given to you. And you sure as hell, I think, can't be a representative if you drive by or you don't show up. And two of the promises I'll make is that I'll drive by and stop. Like I say, I've got a 17-year-old truck and it's not on cruise control. I downshift a lot and put it park. And we're going to be in Tooele County tomorrow. We'll be in Wendover. We'll be going through Ipapot to Delta. Uh, we'll be in Beaver. We'll be probably stopping at Minersville briefly. We'll be in Iron County, Cedar, St. George, and then back up to Manti. So I promise I'll be listening a lot. And as we listen and have conversations, I think we should be able to find areas where we can agree on. And I don't care if someone voted for Donald Trump last time. I don't care if someone's a re registered Republican or Democrat or, or Libertarian or anything, I think we can find a common ground on that. That's really why I'm running. That's great. I want to give everybody your website again. That's westonforcongress.com. It's W-E-S-T-O-N for congress.com. That's right. And I'm very accessible, so I will give you my direct email. It goes to me. It doesn't go to anyone else. So if anyone wants to ask me a question, uh, has issues that are important, please email me directly at K-A-E-L at westonforcongress.com. Okay. I'm glad you spelled that because I had to clarify it when we got started. It's Kale spelled K-A-E-L at westonforcongress.com. That's great. Well, thanks again for coming on. It was interesting to talk to you, and I'm glad you made time. Thank you. Thank you, and I'm going to make sure more Democrats get on your program because, again, our country needs to is to bridge build and if, if, if we Democrats aren't you know, on your program that's on us well said all right thank you again it was great to have you here thank you. I appreciate your time you got it See all ya. right everybody thanks again for tuning in to this episode of color country politics I'm Jenny Hendricks along with my co-host Jesse Harris who is mostly silent but important nonetheless thank you Jesse and Jenny we really appreciate your time Sure, you no got problem. it. All right. We'll see you role. soon. Let's do it again. <laughs> bye bye, everybody. Yeah. You've been listening to Color Country Politics, a production in cooperation with Utah Politico Hub and graciously sponsored by Century 21 Prestige Realty at 121 North Main Street, Cedar City. Special thanks to Amoeba Crew for use of their song Background Indie Rock, licensed under Creative Commons. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever fine podcasts are found. Also, check out our YouTube channel where we post video of our interviews. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and our website at www.colorcountrypolitics.com.